We serve an awesome God, and it's an honor to stand before you today. I'm going to give honor to Pastor Shepherd for the opportunity to minister the word of the Lord. Amen. And uh, we know, and as we all say, these are great, great big shoes to fill. Amen. But we appreciate the opportunity after the sermons that I hear, the ministry of the, our ministers here at this church. I'm just honored to be a part of a team. Amen. I feel like the low guy on a totem pole. Amen. I feel like the base. Everybody does so much better and greater than I do. And I just, it's just an honor to be a part. Amen. Of such a great ministry team here at the Church of Columbus. Amen. And the leadership of our fine pastor, Pastor Shepherd, Sister Shepherd, their leadership here at the church, just tremendous. I want to give honor to my wife. <laughs> well, we have uh, almost six days as empty nesters. And uh, so uh, there's nobody else. I'd rather spend my empty nest time than my beautiful wife. Amen. And uh, I appreciate her support, her prayers. Amen. And my family, Jeremy and Erica, just I know that they pray for me. Amen. And I appreciate that. Without taking any more time, let's go into the word of the Lord, looking at Isaiah chapter 53. Give honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Where would we be without our Lord? Amen. Isaiah 53, verse 1, a very well-known portion of Scripture. And uh, it says, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And just for a few moments today, I want to talk on the topic of external expressions of internal hurts. External expressions of internal hurts. Amen. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Lord, I pray, dear God, that you would help me today to minister your word as you've given it to me, Lord. I pray that you would help me, Lord, tonight, dear Lord Jesus. You know my heart. You know my mind. Dear God, and desire to get this word out to, to our people, to your people, Lord. I ask that this word will go forth and minister and touch today. Don't let us leave this place as we've come, but let us leave filled and closer to you than we've ever been before. Help me, Lord. Minister your word. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. I want to read uh, uh, two or three more portions of Scripture just kind of to lay a foundation of where I want to go here today. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21, it says this, For even hereunto we are called... Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Who his own self bear our sins and his own body on the tree. That we, being dead to sin, should live righteousness, live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. In Luke chapter 4, verse 17, he says, And there was delivered unto him a book of the prophet Esaias. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance unto the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. James 5.13 says, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. 
And he have committed any sins, they shall be forgiven him. Amen. Just for a few moments, I want to talk on external expressions of internal hurts. I want to start off by saying that God is a healer of not only external injuries, but internal damage. The Bible says that by his stripes we are healed. In the book of Isaiah, if you look up the word stripes, it's Shabura. Amen. And in Isaiah, it is defined as a wheel or black or blue mark, a blueness, a bruise, a hurt, a stripe or a wound. If you look at in the book of Isaiah, it doesn't give you a picture in Isaiah of the stripes that we think of when we read the New Testament, right? In the New Testament, he was scourged with a cat of nine tails. So we know because we've heard it preached often that when Jesus was scourged, it was with a cat of nine tails and his body was broken. The stripes, it cut his body. They cut his flesh. He bled. He was scourged. And they did that in order to make the torment of the crucifixion more painful. When they crucified slaves, the Romans did, they would scourge them first to make carrying the cross the most miserable experience of carrying your own, for lack of a better term, uh, electric chair, right, up to where you're going to go and sit. You not only walked up there, but you carried the item that you were going to be hung on. But in the book of Isaiah, it gives more of a picture that that beating or that scourging is not something that broke your skin, but something that beat you and left you like a bruise, an internal type injury. How many of you had a bruise before? You've been hit so hard that there was a bruise, right? Bruises are ugly. Nobody really, I don't think, wants to uh, demonstrate a bruise. You know, usually they're hidden, right? Uh, wear long sleeves or a shirt or something to cover a bruise because a bruise is an outward expression of an internal injury. The bleeding and the hurts on the insi- is on the inside. The word bruise for our iniquity and kind of scattering the the way I have it, but I I just want us to understand that, that in verse 5 when it says he was bruised for our iniquities, that word bruised was deka in Hebrew, which means to crumble and beat to pieces, contrite or crush, destroy or oppress. It's my, the meaning is that he was under such a great weight of sorrow on account of our sins that it was, as it were, he was crushed to the earth. That's how the word bruised is interpreted in Isaiah 53. Stripes is more as a bruise as we know it. Does that make sense? Uh, Marion Webster defines a bruise as an injury involving a rupture of small blood vessels and discoloration without a break in the overlying skin. Amen? So it's an internal type injury. It's an internal type hurt. There is some outward manifestation, but this injury, although it may be caused from an external force, it doesn't make it all the way out of the body other than just a a sign that there was an injury there. Does that make sense? It's an internal injury. It's an internal hurt. A demonstration that I don't know why it comes to my mind, but... Because it does, I'll use it as an illustration. You know, like children, when they are abused, the abuser can hide it, right? They can hide it because the bruises are usually under the shirt or they wear long sleeves until it becomes an external expression of internal injury, a fractured arm, right? When there's a fracture, then it's no longer an internal injury. It's external. There's an external demonstration. And then when they take them to the hospital and they reveal, they say, oh, my, this is more than just a one-time incident. He, he or she didn't really fall down the stairs. There is, there is a record of abuse. And then as they do the x-rays, and we know the stories. I'm sure we read articles of child abuse. And, and then they, 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 they demonstrate there is, there's a lot of wounds here, a lot of internal injuries that have been hurt or have been hidden for many years. 
But in a spiritual sense, there are many of us that are sitting here in this area that have internal injuries, that are bruised, that we hide. And we don't let anybody else know. But they sit there, and they're inside of us, and nobody, nobody else knows. Now, we hide them really well. I'm going to get way ahead of myself. But, so this may last more like a 15-minute lesson than a 30-minute lesson, because I am already <clears throat> way ahead of myself. There are, okay, I'm just going to minister. Is it okay if I just talk to you? I just put it, I put it in writing and, but there are injuries and things that happen in our lives that, that we hide well, but yet there are external expressions of these injuries that are demonstrated that there are a lot of internal hurts. In, uh, I'll tell you, we're going to be done really quick here. In Mark chapter 2. We read of a story, the Bible says, and straight, straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door, and he preached the word unto them. And when they come unto him, bringing one sick of palsy, which was born of four, and when they could not come nigh to him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of palsy lay. And when Jesus saw their faith... He said unto the sick of the palsy, he says, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why does this man speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived this in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason those thing, ye these things in your hearts? Whether it's easy to say to the sick of palsy, thy sons be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and take up thy bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise, take up thy bed, go thy way, and into the house. And immediately he rose, took up thy bed, and went forth before, before them all. Insomuch that they were amazed and glorified God, saying, and this is what they said, we never saw it. On this fashion. Everyone say that today. I've never seen it like this before. The injuries endured by Jesus were not in vain. I believe Isaiah depicts this. He was wounded that is pierced through for our transgressions that is our sins. He was bruised. Translated deca meaning utterly crushed for our iniquities that is our moral evils. The chastisement or the correction and discipline of our peace was upon him. With his stripes or wounds, we are healed. That is that we are mended or cured. It refers to our spiritual condition being made whole. It is internal spiritual wounds need to be healed so we can get up and walk again. When this man or they brought this man to Jesus, Jesus forgave first. Then he healed the external. Jesus healed the inner man before dealing with the external condition. Listen to me. Jesus knew the man's spiritual condition. He touched, it touched Jesus before his physical condition did. See, nobody could see the, the hurt inside the man. No one could see the sin that he had committed. No one could see the depression that this man held within that had nothing to do with his external situation. They took him to Jesus because he couldn't walk. But the greater problem was not that he couldn't walk, is that he was hurt inside. He was depressed. Something had happened in the past that was greater than the external handicap, as to say. So when Jesus looked at this man, the first thing and the first words out of Jesus were not, hey, rise up and walk. No, he saw the most desperate need 
is the hurt inside. So he looked at this man. He said, son, thy sins be forgiven. He took care of the internal condition before he ever addressed the outward and as far as I'm concerned, and it's like it seems to me, is that Jesus would have stopped there. That the only reason he, he healed the external situation was to prove that he could forgive sin. Because what Jesus is more concerned about in our lives is not our outward appearance or, or our handicaps that are outside. is that deep hurt that nobody knows and that thing that you never talk to anybody about, but you sit there or it keeps you awake at night and only you and God know about it. And when you come into this place, it seems like when you hear the word of God, it opens that wound and it makes us uncomfortable when we sit in our pew or in the chair because only you and God know this. And sometimes it hinders our praise and it hinders our worship because we don't want anybody else to know that we hurt or we worship and we praise. So, and, and instead of it being real worship or praise, it is like putting a jacket over our hurt because if I raise my hands, nobody will know that I hurt. If I sing the song and clap, nobody really knows about my hurt. I want to tell you something. Jesus knows about your hurt, and he was wounded, and he, his stripes were not only for the external injuries, but for that injury that's deep inside that nobody else knows about. That's what he's more concerned about than anything else because if you allow him in there if you allow him in your secret place and allow him to heal that hurt then you can be totally delivered but you've got to let him in you can't just pretend and play and hide the bruise with a praise or, or with a worship or with a smile or with a good attitude Jesus isn't concerned about that Jesus is concerned about the condition of your of your heart and the hurt that you have inside and I believe that he brought me here today to let you know that he's not only a healer of cancer he's not only a healer of COVID he's no no not just a healer of an illness, but he is a healer of your soul. He's a healer of your heart. And if you've been broken and if you've been hurt, he says, I was bruised so that you could have healing inside. I'm telling you, Jesus came not just to not just to pretend and, and make us feel good and have feel good service. We don't come here just to get an emotional high. We come here because we are human and we are hurt or have been hurt or have a history of being hurt. And he's here to say, I didn't come to entertain you. I've come to heal you. I was bruised so that you could be healed. These stripes that I took up on my back, they weren't just to have a good testimony. They were to give you a testimony. I was hurt so I could relate to you so that when you come to me, I understand that pain. I believe that some of our issues are that we want Jesus to work from the outside in, but Jesus wants to work from the inside out because of the heart is right the outside would take care of itself. Jesus is concerned so much. So that he was scourged to fix, to heal, to forgive, to mend that internal struggle, that internal hurt, that internal weakness. There was an injury for that. I remember when the, you know, when the computer apps first came out. I remember being at National Youth Congress and Brother Shea Mann preached a message at National Youth Congress. And he says, there's an app for that. You know, whatever you need, there's an app for that. I was reminded that when I, I was reading about the wounds that Jesus took on his body. And then I, I began to match up the hurts. But there was an injury in, on his body for whatever hurts you. 
He took it on him so that he could heal you. So I heard there's an injury for that. But there's an injury for that. When he, was, when he was wounded, when, when the stripes were upon his back and he was scourged and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, it, wasn't ju- it is a demonstration of his love, but it was to relate to our hurt so that we could say he understands these internal injuries that nobody knows. He understands that loneliness that nobody else feels. I say that... You, you hear this so often. The, the earth is the, mo- the most populated as it's ever been. But, but the spirit of loneliness is greater than it's ever been. People are lonely and they're hurt and they're alone and they're isolated. And internal hurts that nobody else knows. And Jesus, I believe, has sent me here today. I really believe this. And if, if you're watching this and you t- tuned in and you've lasted this long, I want you to know, keep watching. Because I believe that the Lord sent me here today to talk to somebody who's broken on the inside. And Jesus is telling you, I have an injury for that. I can fix that. I can relate to you. There is healing in this house for that I'm here to tell you tonight that the healer is in the house you may sit there and that inner condition limits your worship which is an outward manifestation of an internal hurt The secret failure that hinders your praise, that personal ache that keeps you at a distance. There's an injury and there's a healer in the house for that. Because it's not that he cannot or that he will not. It's just that we are just so good at hiding our bruises because they are ugly. But we must recognize that He was scourged for that. And tonight, I feel him reaching for you. He makes his presence real, and then he sends his word out. But it's up to us to respond. I need healing tonight. And an external expression of an internal hurt in Luke chapter 7. Verse 37 says, And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at me in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with ointment. Now when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it, He spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touches him. For she is a sinner. The Bible or Luke calls her a sinner. Some believe that she was a prostitute. Some say that it could be another type of sin. The reality is that she was bruised. Whatever sin or whatever travesty she held within had her bruised. So she tried to cover it and the blanket became harlotry or alcoholism or anger or drug addiction or bitterness manifestations of an internal injury bruises if you will but that day was a different day because she recognized the healer had entered the house so she brings with her the bottle of tears years of hurt turmoil loneliness self-doubt all that had been bottled up and an alabaster her box of ointment and with tears and ointment at the feet of Jesus she worshipped and when the Pharisee the religious person in the room you see Jesus does not care what anyone thinks 
And you have to understand that. That Jesus doesn't care what I think. Jesus doesn't care what Brother Green thinks. Jesus doesn't care what anybody else thinks. When you come to an altar, it's not about you and me. It's about you and him. Well, if I go to the altar, they're going to think, Jesus doesn't care about what anybody thinks. I want you to know what Jesus cares about is your heart and your need for healing. If Jesus cares about anything, it's for you to be completely spiritually healed so that he can make a difference in your life. He doesn't care what I think. He doesn't care what Sister Richards thinks or or what Brother Jet thinks. Let them think what they will. My thing is I need to be healed, and that's what matters to me. I've been hiding this bruise. I've been hiding this hurt for too long. I have the opportunity now in the presence of Jesus to bring it to him and to worship him and to cry at his feet and, and to wash his feet with my tears and dry them with my hair and break a box of alabaster and just anoint him and worship him and praise him and give him everything that I have because I am tired of hiding my hurt. I am tired of hiding my bruises. They need not to be hidden. They need to be healed. You don't need to hide your bruises. You need to come to an altar with Jesus and allow him inside of you to heal your brokenness. That's what he's concerned about. That's why he was beaten. He wasn't beaten so you could hide him. He was beaten so that he could heal him. When When he saw it, When the Pharisees saw it, he questioned because he knew the bruises this woman hid. And so he said, if he knew what manner of woman this is that touches him. And the answer from Jesus is so simple. Basically, it was this. He told the Pharisee. I have been in your house, and you have yet to worship, because you think you have it all together, but not her. She's broken. She's internally hurt, and she has not stopped worshiping me since I came in to this house. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, her bruises, which are many, her hurts, which are many, are forgiven, are healed. For she loved much, but to whom little was forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. That's what he said to her. And that's what he wants to say to you. Because sometimes these internal hurts cause are caused by external forces. Sometimes they're caused by mistakes we have made. And things we can't forgive ourselves for. I believe the condition of her life was based on her internal hurts. So there was an outward expression for that internal hurt. And that outward expression was a means or a way to cover that bruise. People have attitudes with you at work. And you wonder what the problem is. There's internal hurt. There's internal insecurity sometimes, and that's the only way they know to cover it. You know, that's why the Bible tells us, you know, our our, our battle is not with flesh and blood, but about spirits. You know, people are battling hurts. There's some of us in here tonight that are battling internal hurts, and and somebody had hid the oil. I brought it back out because we're going to anoint people with oil today, and there's going to be healing in this house.
Because I believe that there are internal hurts in this place today that need to be healed. They just haven't been brought to Jesus yet. But if we can ever, here I go again, just forget about what anybody thinks and come to an altar, then Jesus can heal you. And you can begin a new journey of healing. And you can come. And he can minister to your hurt. By his stripes, we are healed. We all stand. Tonight, Jesus is here to heal On a Wednesday night, I believe he placed this in my heart for you. If you need healing tonight, he is here for you. You do not have to live like that. You hear me? You do not have to live like that. By his stripes, internal and external, we are healed. Someone needs healing tonight. And before I make this altar call, I'm going to tell you something that happened just, again, a couple of Sundays ago. Right at night Sunday. The choir was doing a tremendous job of leading worship and I had hurt my ankle a couple weeks ago running. I mean, not hurt my ankle. It's a long story. I don't have time. I was hurt, and I still hurt. But during that worship, I, 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 I was trying. I, I really was trying to just get with it. And I was really hurt. I was really, my foot was really hurting. And the more I tried, you know, I don't have no rhythm, so, I mean, that even made it worse. But I was trying, and I was hurting. But then, I don't know if it was Justin or the minister said, why don't you just join with somebody and just worship? And Brother Jet was standing right next to me, and he just leaned over and put, and you know, I was still hurting, but... It made it so much easier to praise. And it took some of the weight off and some of the pain that when I held on to him and he held on to me, it just made it so much easier. So I'm going to ask. I know there's hurt in this building. I, I, I don't even have to guess. I know that there was hurt. I know that there are people today that were touched by this word. You have internal hurts that need to be healed. And I'm going to invite you to come to the altar. Let me reiterate. Jesus don't care what anybody thinks. They only get, I I don't care what anybody guesses. I'm telling you, if I wasn't delivering this message I'd be the first one to the altar because I really don't care what you think about me. I need healing. So I'm going to invite you to come to the altar if you need prayer today.